Reptilians, welcome and welcome back to my channel. So this week's video is a little bit last minute, I guess. I mean, today is Thursday and it's not up until Sunday, but I had a video lined up all about reptile supplements, calcium, D3, multivitamins, all that. But with everything that is going on, I felt like it would be maybe a little better to just do a cleaning video where I show you my animals and you can just kind of watch my animals do animal things things instead of a, another sit down video of me explaining things. This video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is wonderful. They make conversion kits for tanks to turn old tanks that you may have laying around into an upright standing vertical tank for your arboreal animals. Normally I do ad reads at the end, but because of everything that's going on, small businesses are not doing the best and I wanted to throw them in at the beginning because they are wonderful and they are a small business. You can get these kits shipped directly to your house and if you use my code ellsreptiles at iheartgeckos.com, you can get a free feeding ledge with your purchase of a conversion kit as well, which is awesome. And in in a little bit you will actually see what my iHeartGeckos conversion kit tank looks like now. The tank is still doing wonderfully so we're gonna see that. I don't think I show every animal in this because I didn't clean every single tank in one day. That would take literally all day. Let's get to cleaning those tanks and make sure you stay until the very 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 end of this video because there might be a surprise animal edition. Who knows? So make sure to stay until the end. Anyways let's go. All right, so first of all, we are going to do Morty's tank. As you can see, it is destroyed. He always destroys his tank, and quickly after I cleaned the whole thing, he destroyed it again, and there he is looking huge. I get a lot of questions about this. Yes, I will be upgrading his tank very soon. He is an adult, and he is definitely too big for this tank. I know a 40-gallon breeder is bare minimum size for an adult, but I do feel like he needs a lot more space, so yes, he will be getting an upgrade soon. But First of all, we are just pulling everything out of his tank. And that of course includes all the substrate. You might see quite a bit of shed in here. And that is one of the biggest reasons that we are changing all the substrate is because he did just get done shedding. And I don't know if you guys have ever smelled a blue tongue skink shed, but it smells so weird. So basically anytime he sheds, I completely clean out his tank. But yeah, I'm just scraping all of this out. And then I'm actually using a new clean cleaning product that was actually recommended to me by Lizard Guru. I was using Flukers, you guys know, and I ran out of that and I wanted to try something different. The really cool thing about them is that you can just mix a little bit of both in water so it's going to last for a super long time. And the instructions say that you can either just let it dry or rinse it off and you're good to go. Cleaning supplies makes me a little nervous so I always opt to rinse things out, but I don't have to fully clean it like I did the Flukers to get it all out, which is awesome. And once that's all cleaned out, we can start to add the substrate. This week we are doing something a little bit different. We're still going to be using the forest moss and the eco earth, but instead of the orchid bark or cypress mulch, we are going to try this pro cocoa coconut bark. And from the tanks that I did with it, it is so wonderful. A lot of you guys recommended it and said it was a cheaper option and that the brick actually expands and it makes a lot. And it did. It was enough for all three tanks tanks, two ball python tanks and Morty's tank. The thing with cypress mulch is when you're mixing it around with your hands, it causes splinters like crazy. And this one didn't at all. And it was super light and fluffy and all the animals seem to really enjoy burrowing into it and they all seem to like it. So this might be a keep. We'll see how it holds up, but I'm really enjoying it so far. And then I'm also adding one full brick of the eco earth and about a quarter of the brick of forest moss. And that is compressed moss that I got this time instead of just the sphagnum moss but this is a really good consistency I was really happy with it and I really like how that pro cocoa looks too because it just blends in with the eco earth so very very happy Thank you. 
Next up, we are doing Sterling's tank, and he is going to basically get the same sort of thing that Morty got, and that's why I wanted to do them all at the same time. But we are just taking everything out, and if you notice when I'm taking the substrate out, I am using a glove, and that's because he had the cypress mulch, and it gives splinters, and it hurts. Then we're gonna add that Pro Cocoa and Eco Earth Mix. I normally put moss in his, and I honestly forgot, so I will be just putting moss in his hot hide when he's shedding but this looks like it's gonna hold moisture pretty well and I'm really hoping that it does but yeah that was basically it for his tank Next up is Sylvanas' tank, and as you can see, I am not cleaning this one. I took a break. After my husband did all this without wearing gloves, he had a handful of splinters that we got to pull out. And for her, she is just getting the Pro Coco. Usually she only gets orchid bark and nothing else needs to be mixed with it because she always has a pretty easy time shedding. So she's just getting that, and we put everything back, and she enjoyed it. She actually spent a good amount of time digging in her tank at as well which isn't normal for her so we thought that was super cool. And then we're gonna do Percy's tank. As you can see, it is in need of cleaning. She regularly destroys her tank too because she has that dig spot and she likes to make use of it and dig it into the rest of her tank. So first, before I disinfect, I'm just going through with the vacuum cleaner and then I'm using that same disinfectant solution and just cleaning everything under the tiles, getting all that dirt out so we can put a new layer of topsoil in there for her to dig. And then once that is all rinsed out and and dried up I am just putting the decorations and hides and stuff back in the tank for her dig spot like always I'm using that Scott's topsoil that doesn't have any kind of vermiculite or fertilizers or pesticides or anything like that in it and we are just kind of packing that down so that she can dig and I'm not filling it up as much as I usually do because the more I fill it up the faster she is going to destroy this tank so I'm just doing it like that and sticking her cork bark and all of her cork things and water dish and all that back into the tank. And the last tank that you guys are going to see me clean in this video is Zaz's tank. First, I started by vacuuming everything out. I did have to stop multiple times because she was going crazy on the couch. And at the end, I had to stop everything for a second due to a Zaz poop scare slash emergency. I really thought she was going to poop on my couch, but I got her to the bathtub in time. And this is her after her bath. The camera wouldn't focus, of course, but looking super clean and probably feeling a little better too. Anyway, we are vacuuming everything thing out first and then I am just using that same disinfectant spray that I made earlier and just spraying everything down with the driftwood since I couldn't really spray it and rinse it as well as you can glass and stuff I rinsed it two or three times and then I let it dry out a little so I just kind of did all of the instructions on the bottle to make sure that it was okay for her and also made sure it didn't smell like anything in the tank she just chilled out on the couch the whole time I did that and yeah that was about all for her tank but she was not satisfied when she was back in her tank she immediately wanted back out at that window but I got it done so that's what matters And not cleaning this tank because I had already done that, but I just kind of wanted to show off Handsome Jack. If you guys remember when I got him, he was solid white and his fins were all clear, but he does have the marble gene and so he will change colors his whole life. And he is just over a year old. A lot of you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, might have seen me post about him, the before and after pictures. But this is how much he has marbled in a year and it just excites me so much and I can't wait to see what he's going to look like as he gets older. But his tank is still doing really good. As you can see, all the crazy amount of growth both of his plants and yeah I just kind of wanted to show off how beautiful he is. 
Next up is Goliath's tank. I didn't clean this tank. This is a bioactive tank. I just kind of cleaned the glass and I also added a little bit more moss and a couple more leaves. But other than that, it's doing really good. This is that conversion kit that I was talking about from iHeartGeckos. Here we are a year later and this thing is still doing wonderfully. It's still solid in place, but this tank is amazing and the plants are growing so well. Goliath seems to be loving it so much. As you can see, she is a pretty Pretty chunky girl. I'm probably gonna have to lower her feeding schedule even more. She is currently eating every other day, but it's probably gonna have to go to a couple times a week because she is super chunky. But these converted kits are wonderful, lots of ventilation, and they do fantastically. Here we have Dexter's tank, which is also an iHeartGeckos tank, but he doesn't make these as much anymore. As this video is coming out, these enclosures are all sold out on the website, but sometimes at reptile shows, Repticon, here in my area at least, he will have them. This tank also did really good. You can see all the growth of the plants. I did end up adding a little moist hide floating ball into his tank. If you guys remember a long time ago when he had his little tiny tank, he had a small one of these and I found this when I was cleaning my reptile supplies up and I thought it'd be cool to go into the tank. Yeah, that's how these tanks are doing. But that is it. Hopefully that was enjoyable. A whole bunch of just animal footage. And as I said at the beginning, make sure to use my code ELSREPTILES at iHeartGeckos.com so that you can get a free feeding ledge with the purchase of a conversion kit. That is it. As always, if you are not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. Thank you so much to Jason, aka Joan, for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole dress stuff. Thank you so much, Jason. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.